Hey, Pastor Dale here from Calamo Church, and I am excited to be starting a new series with you this week called Stay Positive. And the reason we're doing this this week, um, starting this week into the next couple weeks, is with the Thanksgiving holiday coming up next week. The conversation is about gratitude, so I feel like it's perfect timing. Uh, what we will be doing with this series is doing these first two or two sermons in the series, taking a break, and then finishing up in January. During December, we'll have an Advent series, but I didn't want to start Advent too early. You know, I didn't want to be one of those people who forgets about Thanksgiving and jumps straight towards Christmas because Thanksgiving is one of my favorite holidays. I don't want to be like one of those department stores where November 1st hits and it's all the Christmas stuff. No, it's we got to we got to celebrate Thanksgiving here. And I wanted to do this series called Stay Positive uh, this week called Enough of the Bad News because there's a lot of negativity around. Everything just seems to sound negative. Uh and, you know, I've kind of had enough of bad news. I've had enough negativity. A lot of the sermons I preach tend to be around emotions and things going on. And that's because it's so pressing. There's a lot of negativity in the world today. There's a lot going on and I'm tired of it. If you just turn on your news, you go click. There's people dying. There's jobs either vanishing or uh, the inflation struggling, the economy struggling, nation divided. Everything is the end of the world as we know it. And it's easy to get sucked into it, to be unsettled, to be anxious, as we talked about a couple weeks ago, and wondering if we'll ever get back to normal after the pandemic. I know people always talked about the new normal. People wanted to get back to normal. What does normal even look like? We're emotionally on edge. And I don't know about you, but when I get a little on edge, small things can kind of set me off, which is just makes me more easily discouraged. And I want instead to focus on the positive. I want to stay positive, have joy, which we talked a bit about last week. And last week we talked about finding joy in Jesus by returning to him. I want to look at more ways we can stay positive, really stemming from that, because I got a lot out of that series. So how will this season impact your life for the good? That's the question to ask. Um, what do we do? What do we do when we're upset? What do we do when everything feels like it's falling, our life is falling apart around us? We stay positive. And why? Why would we stay positive? Well, a negative outlook never leads to a positive life. You, Your brain has this really neat feature where the atmosphere you surround yourself can really impact kind of the way that you feel. It's it, The idea of fake it till you make it is not unfounded. Um, you can be and do a lot of things to get yourself in a positive mind space. Um, and that's why when I look at my future, when I try to look for it, I am unshakably optimistic. And that has gotten some pushback in times. People have said, you know, why, how can you be this optimistic when there's so much that is wrong with the world. When there is so much bad in your life and others' lives, how can you be that? And for me, it's uh, it, optimism is not a denial of reality. I'm not saying everything's good or it's not a big deal or there's not going to be a challenge. I fully admit that the world can be incredibly difficult. Life is hard. There's challenges involved. Optimism also isn't a blind faith. It's not some naive hope that I have, wishful thinking, that, and just sitting there saying, oh, well, it'll all work out. It's not that. I know that, you know, <laughs> there's a lot of stuff that needs to work out in the right way. Optimism is a confidence about the future or a successful outcome. And optimism for me is the unwavering expectation that our loving God is working in every situation 
for our future good. That's what it is. That is where it is. And I say that because we read in Romans 8, 28, and we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. So imagine you have an impossible boss, and you have a financial setback, you have annoying in-laws, maybe you got kids who are the annoying ones. I know my parents might say that. Uh, you're going through a painful breakup. Um, there's an irritating inconvenience. Maybe it's a crushing disappointment. Even a negative situation still holds potential to produce a positive purpose. And that is where my optimism comes from. I have an unwavering expectation that because of our loving God, that are not because that we have a loving God who is working in every situation to produce good. Think about what you think about for a second. Just take a moment and think about how you think. How do you see future? How do you see the future? How are, are your thoughts consumed with negativity, with worry, with fear, with anxiety, with bad news? It's pretty simple. What consumes your mind controls your life. The life you have is a reflection of the thoughts you think. If you think the world is trouble, that's what you're going to see. If you think you can't trust anyone, you're not going to trust anyone. If you hate the circumstances you're in, you're going to have a negative outcome. Sometimes if you just tell yourself that this is going to be the best day ever, or despite the setbacks, this was a good day, you will have positive thoughts. The quality of your life, though, will never exceed the quality of your thoughts, and that's the problem with pessimism or a critically negative mindset. Uh, one of the things that happens with pessimism is that it tends to view negative events as personal and permanent. My fault that this is going on. I'm no good. I'm a failure. I'm unworthy. I'm incapable. I've blown it. And it also that these are permanent. Bad things will always happen to me. It's never going to change. I'm always going to be a victim. And those can extend beyond that. The economy is shop. I'm never going to get the job I wanted. This next virus is unstoppable. Uh, the world will never be safe again because of all the war. And I get why people are there. I understand what leads to that place. But being content, being satisfied, being blessed, being optimistic, it isn't a state of affairs. It's a state of mind. I've got a lot going on in my life, and it's not always great. But I always try to stay in a state of mind that says, I'm going to work through this, I'm going to get better, and it's going to be better. And what consumes your mind controls your life. Because when I've been in a place where I'm sitting there and saying, everything's falling apart, I'm terrible, I'm useless, how could this be? That's, that's what my life reflects. But when I'm in a place of good thoughts, that state of mind, that optimism, I'm able to be content and satisfied and feel blessed. So what consumes your thoughts? Is it faith for the future? Is it fear? And what if it is fear? Uh, what if it what if what if it's dread? How do you starve your fears and feed your faith? How do you grow your faith? How? Let me tell you. It's not easy. It can be a struggle. I and Here's how I do it. Here's how I cut out the fear. I find the places what, that are feeding me that. I find and I cut those away. Maybe you feel dread because you find yourself watching the news 24-7. Maybe cut back on that. A lot of people my age got 
involved in something called doom scrolling where you'd sit on your phone and just look through negative article after negative article, negative thing after negative thing. Doom scrolling could prevent you from being happy. Now let me show you how I feed my faith that helps to starve my fear. I turn to Romans 8. Now, Romans 8, um, Paul's in a bit of a mess right now. He's a bit of a mess right now. And in a lot of ways, Romans 8 is him talking himself toward faith. We've already read things about how there's no condemnation in Christ our Lord. Uh, we've read about how the mind, when the mind is on flesh, it desires flesh, but the mind on the spirit looks for a peaceful life led by the spirit of God. We're children of God. There's a whole bunch there. Let's jump in at eight, Romans 8, verse 18, though. I consider that our present sufferings are not worth comparing with the glory that will be revealed in us. Remind, remind ourselves real quick, who's writing? It's Paul who has suffered. He's been imprisoned multiple times. Five times he's had to endure 40 lashes, which took me a while. I was a kid, not going to lie. I was thinking like eyelashes. I was just picturing them like putting extra eyelashes on Paul or plucking them away and couldn't figure out why that was such a bad thing. But no, he's been lashed with a whip 40 times or 40, 40 lashes five times. Uh, Three times he was beaten with rods. He was uh, stoned and not in the way that uh, people would talk about it now. He's been shipwrecked. He's spent nights at sea. He's been betrayed. He's been beaten and left for dead. And yet Paul writes, present sufferings are not worth comparing come. Are not worth comparing are not worth comparing with the glory to that will be revealed in us. What is to come cannot compare. So let me ask again, how are you hurting? Have you lost your job? Are you experiencing hardship? Are you facing job loss? Are you worried sick? Are you battling cancer? Are you facing a relational challenge, a marriage that's falling apart, kids or friends feeling betrayed, hard work at home? I want you to realize that the struggle you're in today is producing the strength you need tomorrow. I can't even begin to compare our current struggles. You can't even begin to compare those with God's future blessings and the glory to be revealed in us unwavering expectation that our loving God is working in every situation for our future good should be our baseline. No matter what you're experiencing, that cannot compare to the coming glory. So we starve our fears, we feed our faith, we renew our thoughts, and our lives can move and should move in the directions of our strongest thoughts. And how do we make those strong start or the strongest thoughts? Romans 8:26. In the same way, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. There is great news there. When you feel incapable, unsure, uncertain, worn out, you're not alone. The same spirit that raised Christ from the dead is in you and helps you in your weakness. Anyone feeling a little weak? You feeling discouraged, overwhelmed, exhausted? God doesn't just help those who help themselves. God doesn't turn you away because you're discouraged or overwhelmed, because you feel too broken. God helps those who need his help, especially if you're weak or broken or desperate. If you're hurting, he can be your comfort. If, he's, if you're confused, he'll be your guide. If you're discouraged, he'll be your hope. If you're anxious, he'll be your peace. And if you're weak, he will be your strength. Romans 8, 28. And we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. There's days I love. There's days I endure. There's good news. 
and there's heartbreaks. If even in the inconveniences, even in the crushing disappointments, and in the great times, God is working towards our good. The key is in our happiness. And we'll talk more about gratitude next week. But sometimes you got to distance yourself from the things that are making you pessimistic. And you maybe need to lower your expectations a little bit. If you lower your expectations, you won't be disappointed. Wait, no, that's not right. Why would we lower our expectations? Raise your expectations. Raise your expectations in the presence and power and faithfulness of God. Expect God to do amazing things because that's what God has promised. And you won't just get back to normal. You'll be better than normal. If you put that faith in God, your marriages will be stronger. Families closer. Your love deeper. Your generosity greater. Christians will be bolder. The light of the church can be even brighter. Our harvests can be even bigger. Romans 8, 38 and 39. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Jesus Christ our Lord. No matter where I go, my God is there. No matter what I do, my God still loves me. No matter what happens to me, my God is there for me. That is how we start staying positive. And remember, have unwavering expectation that our loving God is working in every situation for our future good. Let us pray. Loving God, I pray that we are able to stay positive, to trust in you in the same way Paul trusted in you, Lord. Let us know that in all things you're working for our glory to come, that in every circumstance, things will be better because you will be there. Lord, I pray that if any of us are feeling pessimistic, are feeling negative, like that we won't be able to find a way out. Lord, I pray that we are able to see the light, that we are able to become optimistic about you and your power, and that even in the darkest of times, we know that you are there for us and love us. It is in your name I pray. Amen. Have a great week. I'll see you again next week for our sermon on gratitude.